Hey, well, good afternoon. Uh, good late afternoon, I guess you would say. Uh, but today, uh, we're going to be doing our, <clears throat> our power for daily living. Now, uh, how many of y'all ever feel like, gosh, man, I look at other Christians and they seem to get it, they, they, they have it all together. Uh, we're going to be talking about that today. Um, and uh, we're going to be in Ephesians 1, 15 through 21, 3, 14 through 21. Now, we'll have the verses up for you, but, you know, the main question today that we're going to answer is, how can I live the life God wants me to live? You know, I, as, as far as for Christians, that's a, that's a question I think we all ask ourselves every single day. If we're truly searching uh, after the way of the Lord, we, we, we almost wake up and say, how can I live the life that God wants me to live? Now, <clears throat> what we need to understand is that we have to have an awareness of the greatness of God's power. Aware of the greatness of God's power. Now, as I mentioned, we're going to be in Ephesians 1, 15 through 21. So I want to read this to you, <clears throat> and we'll be going uh, 1 through 15 through 21, and we'll be jumping a couple of verses too. So this is how this reads. This is Ephesians 1, 15 through 21. It says, For this reason, ever since I heard about your faith in the Lord, in Jesus, and your love for all the God's people, I have not stopped giving thanks for you, remembering you, you in my prayers. I keep asking that God, our Lord Jesus Christ, the glorious Father, may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation so that you may know him better. I pray that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened in order that you may know the hope to which he has called you, the riches of his glorious inheritance in his holy people, in his incomparably great power for us who believe. The power is the same as the mighty strength he exerted when he raised Christ from the dead and seated him at his right hand and in the heavenly realms. <clears throat> Far above all rule and authority, power and dominion, and every name that is invoked, not only in the present age, but also in the one to come. Let us pray. Blessed Heavenly Father, thank you for this day. We thank you that uh, daily, that we live life daily for you, Father. Father, I come before you just in awe of your greatness, in awe of your magnitude, Father, in awe of your power stating that you are the Alpha, the Omega, the beginning and the end, Father. And because of that, we trust in you. Lead us today during this lesson, and thank you for your word. Amen. So, <clears throat> like I said earlier, do you ever think that other Christians are more successful at living a Christian life than you are? You know, I, I'm sure we look around and we see, man, that person, man, they're, they're on fire for God, or... You know, <clears throat> I remember when I used to be that way, and I wonder why am I the way I am right now, but truly, how does that make you feel? How does that make you feel to see others on fire for God or living a, an amazing Christian life, and you're sort of just coasting through it? Try the daily struggle, right? The daily struggle. Well, <clears throat> I, I sometimes see Christians out there, and it looks like, like, like nothing ever phases them, right? Like, you're like, man, that, they've got it all together. But, you know, I can remember a, a, a prominent pastor, and uh, his son had passed away. Um, unexpectedly, and I can remember seeing some interviews afterwards, and the way he spoke was as if he didn't miss a beat in God. And I thought to myself, man, <clears throat> how would I feel in that situation? You know, what, could I stand as firm in the faith as he did? And, uh, you know, uh, we never know till we get there, but th that's the Christian daily life. You know, in, in verses 18 and 19, you know, there are three areas that Paul prays for Ephesians to be enlightened and know more fully. And you know, these three areas, the first one is hope. And it's hope and it's transforming, life-changing work in us and the ultimate reality of being forever in the presence of God, heaven. You know, the second is the riches of his glorious inheritance. Here meaning that uh, is that Christians make up a rich and glorious inheritance for God. Like, like Israel in the Old Testament. Now, if we would look at Psalms 33, 12, it says, Blessed is a nation whose God is the Lord, the people he chose for his inheritance. See, because believers are really important to God. <clears throat> but the focus on today's lesson is his incomparably great power. His incomparably great power. And it emphasizes the, the degree or magnitude of God's power the degree or magnitude of God's power. You know, <clears throat> God's power is so huge, and I think sometimes we miss it because we're sort of burdened with the daily struggle, right? Hashtag, um, I, I don't know, hate my life, right? Stuff like that, right? 
and, 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 and these things cloud us, and then we, we, we don't see the magnitude of what God's glorious inheritance is in us. So all we, although we may not be able to fully grasp the magnitude of God's power, what does Paul say it is like? And we can read this straight from the verse where it says, the power is the same as the mighty strength he, God being, exerted when he raised, his, uh, he, when he raised Christ from the dead and seated him at the right hand of heavenly realms. So although we cannot grasp it, we kind of know what it is because it's, what is it like? It's the same power that he used to resurrect his son. The strongest power ever known to man, even greater than let there be light, boom. Even greater than that, that he raised his son and conquered death. See, God's incomparably great power for us who believe reversed the ultimate effect of sin, which is death, and raised him from the dead and seated him in heaven. So how does it make you feel to know that the same power is available to elevate believers to a new level of spiritual life? See, <clears throat> to me it feels amazing that the very same power that raised Jesus from the dead is in me. That's why, that's why Jesus himself said, you will do greater things than I, because he knows, he knows that his spirit will continue to move forward. And in his spirit, the same spirit that came, brought everything together, the power of the Holy Spirit, the power of God, the power of Jesus Christ is in you right now. But <clears throat> why do you think Paul uses the phrase, the eyes of your heart? Why didn't he choose the head, the brain, or even the intellect? Think about it. Those three things Paul used, your head, your brain, and your intellect. Think about it, your head. You know, we try to rationalize things in our head. Now, for instance, have you ever thought of something that's like late at night, <clears throat> and you're like, man, when my friends share this, they're gonna think this is the best idea in the world. You're rationalizing these things that everybody has already told you is a bad idea. And you're like, no, but and you're justifying, you're justifying, and then, and then you come and tell your friends, and they're like, uh, no, that's crazy. Where are you crazy? You're crazy in the head, man. Because we will try to rationalize things in your brain because some of y'all are too smart for your own good. Y'all are going back and forth until you can make this a reality in your brain. If it doesn't make sense to you, well then, then it can't be true. Or your intellect. If it does not make sense, then it cannot be. This equals this plus this equals this. And I'll tell you, <clears throat> because my personality type, I have to see things in order, right? I, uh, and I understand why Paul says this because this is what bothers me. I'm not saying I'm the smartest person in the world, but I'm just telling you, my personality type has to make things fit in an order. And if it doesn't fit in order, then it just drives me crazy. Why doesn't he use your head, brain, or intellect? Because he knows that it will work against you. See, your heart, your heart knows. That's why in Scripture it states in Romans 10, 9, that if you declare with your mouth Jesus is Lord and you believe in your heart, where? Believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. When he say believe in your brain? <clears throat> because your brain is strong. It's going to convince you not to do something. You know, <clears throat> I won't tell the whole story of how I met Adriana. That's for another day. I don't know if she'll get upset with me. But I knew in my heart when I met Adriana that we were going to get married. Now, here's the deal. If you know how when we first met, I mean, I'll tell you all later about it, but it did not make sense in my head. I couldn't understand it in my brain, and my intellect could not calculate how we would even end up together. But somehow, from the first moment that I met her, I knew that we were going to get married <clears throat> because my heart felt something. And some people say, oh, no, Santiago, that was your eyes. I'm saying, mm, no, no, my heart felt something. I was at church. Come on, people. And like I said, and other people would say, oh, do you realize that? No, it's not going to happen. We're just friends. And, you know, but in my heart, I couldn't lie to my heart. Okay, I'll tell you the story later anyways. <clears throat> but next we see this true inner power. And this is in Ephesians 3, 14 through 19. True inner power. So it reads like this. It says, for this reason... I kneel before the Father. Who? Before the Father. From whom every family in heaven and on earth derives its name. I pray out of his glorious riches, he may strengthen you with power through his spirit in your inner being, so that Christ may dwell in your heart through faith. And I pray that you, being rooted and established in love, may have the power together with all the Lord's holy people to grasp how wide and long and high and deep is the love of Christ. And to know that this love surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled to the measure of all fullness of God, of all fullness of God. 
According to this prayer, what is God's design process in spiritually strengthening believers, strengthening believers, and through whom? His process is rooted through faith in Christ. Faith in Christ. And you know what? <clears throat> Even better, it's rooted in Christ's love. Perfect. Perfect faith and perfect love. So through whom? Jesus Christ. And what? Through his perfect love, through your faith. So why is it important that we, it be in our inner being? See, does this happen by God's initiative? Or what part might we play? And how does faith fit in? See, when Christ is in our inner being, it is who we are. <clears throat> I keep saying this, but those people that say, oh, they're just that way. No, well, then you know what? Then they don't have Christ in them. It's who you are. You strive to be like Christ. See, so, <clears throat> but remember, this can only happen if you can let it happen. So when I ask, does this happen by God's initiative? God wants it to happen. He wants it to be part of you. But remember, this can only happen if you allow it to happen. So when you see other Christians living up the Christian life, it's because they are letting all of Christ in and none of the junk that the devil is trying to throw at you. They're so full of Christ that they have no room for what the world has for them. Does that make sense? Am I hitting a spot? Am I poking at someone right now? I'm preaching to myself right now too because <clears throat> I tell you what, uh, I don't know if you noticed, I'm a little luggage today. I've been battling food poison for the last week, a few days, really. And man, power for daily living, gosh, you can imagine when you're vomiting and other stuff, uh, TMI, right? <clears throat> it, it, it hinders you. At your weak moments, at your, at your, where you're like, I, I just don't know, and, and, and the devil creeps in. Why? Because you're not feeling it full of God. You may be feeling horrible, but guess what? If you feel it full of God, He's going to fill in that gap. See, we must know that we have the power to let God in or keep him out. He will not force himself in. <clears throat> so, so for some of y'all saying, I just don't have that fire anymore, Pastor. You know, I, um, uh, you know, I don't know what it is. You know what it is? It's you not letting God in. It's not the preaching. It's not the worship. It's not the Sunday school. It's not the church. It's you not allowing God to enter your inner being and take control of your life. I work with a lot of kids. And kids, they just don't know. You know, uh, kids are kids. They see everything for face value. But when you start to get to teenagers, young adults and adults, and I, I hear a bunch of things, and I hate to be like a Debbie Downer or anything, but like, Man, Pastor Sam, when we were at camp, it was so amazing, you know. And then we get back here, and it's just like, blah. And I'm like, well, you know, continue that fire. Kindle it. Throw, start throwing wood on, on there. In fact, throw gasoline on your fire so it, that it burns with a deep intensity, that God would be so much in your inner being. I, I, I laugh at the thing that I saw online that, you know, I want to be so full of God that uh, I think it said, uh, when a mosquito bites me, he, he, he leaves singing nothing but the blood of Jesus. And I know that sounds like a southern old gospel type of thing, but that's nothing but the truth, you know. That is absolute truth that, you know, <clears throat> that you would be infectious to those around you. And you don't believe me? Try smiling at someone. Well, it's kind of hard right now because they can't see you. But in the past, you would open a door, do something nice to someone, and it would be infectious. It would be nice, and it would, it would, it would hit people at their heart. And they say, man, that person really cares about me. So we're talking here about it won't happen unless you let it happen. God's, he's a polite guy. <clears throat> so how important does it appear that we be rooted and established in Christ's love? What happens to plants that are not rooted, buildings that are not established? So <clears throat> this verse makes me think of John 15, 5, where it says, <clears throat> I am the vine, you are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. Apart from me, you can do nothing. Now, I wanted to see what this looked like for real. I understand what it looks like in the Christian life, but I want to see the illustration that, that Jesus was giving, right? So we had this huge, huge vine in the back of our house, and I was like, I hate that. Like, I just don't like things like that. Like, I'm not that I just don't like greenery. It's just there was these little bugs falling off, and I just, I don't want to deal with bugs. So I was like, I'm going to get rid of this branch because it's just bringing horrible things. So it's a huge, I should have put a picture. And I went to the root, and I pulled it out, and I told Adriana, this is going to be a biblical illustration that I'll be using in the near future. 
little I behold that I knew I'd be using it right now. Well, it's, it's crazy. <clears throat> you know, the bug stayed on for a little while. And then, you know, as, as, as the root started drying out, I'd go every day and make sure that it wouldn't connect back. And uh, as the root started drying out, you would see pieces of leaf fall out. And then you would see, uh, like, a rain would come and maybe hydrate a little bit, and they would get a little bit. But without the root system in the ground and not grounded, no matter what, it was going to die. Here's the thing that, that about it, though. <clears throat> the reason it's really important to be root is because it started to stink really bad. See, some of you Christians out there who are not rooted in the gospel but are still acting like Christians stink really bad. You know what it looks like? It looks like disrespect, right? It looks like, like you contradicting everything it looks like you being the person that no one wants to be around because you're just so rude. It looks like, it, you know what it looks like? It looks like the person that makes up excuses for not attending church. It, it, it looks, I can just, the, the list just goes on and on and on and, and I run out of fingers. You know why? Because Jesus was true. And it never made more sense than I said, man, you know this root? It's trying to live. It takes a little bit. And even the friends that would stick around it, the little bugs, even they knew that it was dying and then they left. So think about this. If you're not rooted in Christ, you will start to spiritually stink. Isn't that crazy? That Jesus used terms that we should see in our everyday life, but we're so blind to it because of the world and what the world tells us that is okay, that we begin to stink as Christians. All of a sudden, it's your way or the highway. All of a sudden, is no one else has another idea. All of a sudden, it's this way or that way. Or all, and then no one can get along with you, and you're like, everybody in Christianity hates me. No, 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 I'm sorry. If you're not getting along with everybody, it's probably you. <clears throat> it's like, it's, it's, I don't know how to explain it anymore. There's a reason that Christ was so big on saying, you need to be rooted in my Father. You have to be. Because in your daily lives, you will start to stink spiritually. I know I emphasize this a lot, but guess what? This is where I see the most people messing up. I don't have time for my Bible. I, man, you know what? I, I, well, I saw a verse on Facebook, and that's my devotion. That's not your devotion. How would you have liked that if God would have said, well, I thought about saving them, so did that save them? No, he came down, died on the cross for us, took his time to spend with us. I can't get more intense than this because I see that people are passing away not knowing the gospel. Not <clears throat> and then people even more afraid to share their faith because they're afraid of what people will think about them. People not standing up for their faith. Why? Because you're not rooted enough to be able. We're going to be talking about this next week is anointed, but the next week after that is mighty warrior. You want to know the thing? God's got it taken care of. We've won. How easy it to know to stand rooted into something that is successful or something that's already beaten, right? Okay, I'll let that go. But what is the difference between experiencing God's love and knowing the facts about his love? Look, <clears throat> anyone can read the Bible. Do you know that I've, I've had professors in seminary that were not Christians? I know what some of you are saying and saying like, well, how did they do that? Because they manipulated their way into it. I've met pastors who aren't Christians. See, anyone can read the Bible and hear the story about God's love. Anybody can come up here and read it. Don't worry, folks, I'm a Christian. Been for, for a long time. But think about it. I, I'll sort of break it down for you. <clears throat> so what is the difference between experiencing God's love and knowing facts about his love? Have you ever heard you can know God, but you may not know that? Okay, let me explain this to you. I'm going to use a, a story. I made this story up. So <clears throat> hopefully it makes sense. It's like reading a story on Facebook about someone heroically rescuing someone from death. Like they were overcome by rising water and they were going to drown. And just when they thought that they were going to die, someone jumped in and rescued her or him. See, you read about that love and you see that love, but you do not really feel it because it was not towards you or for you. You know the facts of that love. See, experiencing God's love is being that person who is drowning and Christ jumped in that rising water to save you because someone gave their life for yours. That's the difference. I can read about <clears throat> heroics all day long, 
But until I know that sacrificing love towards me, I will never, never completely understand it. So, have you experienced God's power in your life? This is a question for you to answer. Have you experienced God's power, that saving power in your life? See scripture when it says how wide, how long, and how deep is the love of Christ? How, how is out of his glorious riches in verse 16, similar to what we discovered in, in chapter 119 about his incomparable great power? <clears throat> his incomparable great power. It's, it's immeasurable. Nothing compares. There's an argument that goes in my house <clears throat> between my two young girls. And, and um, they're not allowed to use the word infinity when they're arguing with each other. Well, I dare you, infinity. No, you can't use that because that's an unfair word because no one can compare to it. <laughs> God's power is almost unfair to everybody else because no one can compare to it. But guess what? It's truth, so it's fair. It's it's immeasurable, right? And for that, we praise God for his infinite power, infinity and beyond, right? My girls cannot use that infinity word at my house because I, I, I outlawed it. I don't want to be a jerk or anything like that, but I'm like, that's, that's not plain fair. How can, you, how can you say infinity? You know there's nothing after infinity in context, right? So in Ephesians 3, 20 through 21, it says, now to him who is able to Immeasure, do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine according to his power that is at work within us. To him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations forever and ever. Amen. So think about this. When we pray, what kind of request do we usually ask him? And how might this model of prayer affect the way we pray for ourselves? So what I just read to you was a prayer. <clears throat> Think about it. When we pray, what kind of requests do we usually ask of him? And how might this model of prayer affect the way we pray for others and ourselves? So maybe if we look at this, maybe our prayers will go from gimme, gimme, gimme to lead me, lead me, lead me. Have you ever thought about that? <clears throat> You know, as a, as a past worship leader, I guess still worship leader, um, <clears throat> a lot of people said, well, worship got really, worship got really uh, sort of uh, saturated or, or it lost its meaning. And you know what? People were inspired. They wrote them. But one of the things that I did notice is that a lot of worship was about give me, give me, give me. And <clears throat> if you look at the way that I arranged worship, I arranged worship as as the Lord's Prayer, right? So, <clears throat> our Father who art in heaven. Now, I want you to keep that in mind. So, when I arrange worship, I arrange it based on the Lord's Prayer. And, and it always starts out with exaltation, right? Uh, praising God for who He is. Now, let me tell you why. And I'm going to come back to this in a little bit. Now, <clears throat> because of His immeasurable, like, say, like, see, like, what are some things that are immeasurable? Like water in the sea. And how does it make you feel to know that God can do and desire to do more than you can even imagine? So I'm going to get back to the worship thing in a minute, but let me tell you about this. So it is, I, I looked it up, and I was like, okay, I want to know how many gallons are in the sea because I want to catch them on a lie. Because how can you know how many gallons are in the sea if um, no one knows how deep the sea really is, right? The, and I know people are going to be that there. Well, if you read National Geographic, like, no, no one really knows how deep the sea is. Believe me, I looked it up. And, <clears throat> but they have to say about, about 97% of the Earth's water is, is in the ocean, right? They couldn't give me a, a, a just number. They couldn't say this much. They said about. See, about we can only guess. We really can't even measure. So we can't even fathom how big God's love for us if we can't even measure what's even in our own world. Have you ever thought about that? That we're trying to measure something on human standards which we can't even comprehend. So if you can't comprehend something because it's so big, how could you even comprehend how big God's love is for you? It's more than you understand. See, 
And what does Paul's praise affirm about God? What do you think Paul was so assured and confident in making this grand expression? Because Paul was showing that he gave glory and honor to God, the God who transformed his life from being a murderer to being a God-fearing man that we now know he was. This was a God who completely transformed his life into something that he never was. So do you think God can work in your life? Pretty sure we don't have a lot of murderers watching this tonight. So why is it important for us to include praise of God in our prayers? Because we are placing recognition on who God is. <clears throat> Maybe this may challenge you. So many of us walk into the sanctuary not ready to worship. Y'all wonder why I get so pumped up about these things. Man, well, like, I'm gonna lie right now. I feel like, I feel sick, right? But I'm talking about the glory of God and it just, it just does something to me that the adrenaline is going through my body because I'm talking about how big our God is right now. Sometimes we walk into worship and say, oh, that song, that song's not for me. Oh, pastor's preaching that again. I heard that story before. Oh, or like, oh, I have to deal with this. I can't believe church. Or, or wake up in the morning. Oh, I don't want to get up. I know I have a daily devotion, but man, I don't want to do it. No. When you're like that, you're not recognizing who God is. He's not even second in your life. He's more like fourth or fifth. Some people say, man, as soon as I get my coffee, man, I'm good. No, you know what? As soon as I get my daily dose of Jesus, I'm good. See, when Christ showed us how to pray, he said in Matthew 6, 9 through 10, because we want to go to the source, right? This then is how you should pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. See, Jesus himself, sorry, I'm getting calls again. Jesus himself praised God for who he is and what he does. Who he is and what he does. Remember I told you I, I always base the way I set up worship, uh, the way I set up my sermons, <clears throat> the way I set up my prayers based on the Lord's Prayer? Because God said, this is how you should do it. And I know some of you are arguing, but that's a prayer, son, son, or Sam, Pastor Sam. Yeah, but if you want to go theologically deep, there's very little instances where it tells us exactly in the New Testament. Very, even, I, I doubt, because they were in hiding. They really couldn't be loud about it. And even in the Old Testament, the Judaic way of worshiping, it's sort of, I'm not going to say it went out, but when the, the veil was torn, the way that we, we, we speak with Jesus completely changed, that we have this connection to God. So we look at this and we say, how should we? And, and you know, every single worship service that I've done and I've conducted in this way, every single service that I've done and I've conducted in this way, Everybody's been in agreement. The whole team works together. It has been nothing but the Holy Spirit moving in his way because he said, this is how you should do it. You praise my Father and you exclaim and you proclaim. You tell everybody you can how big God is. Remember in the Old Testament when Daniel was out there and he opened the windows and he wasn't doing it because of himself to proclaim, but he was going and praying out and saying, you know what, y'all God, y'all's God may be this, but I will proclaim this in his name. Jesus himself praised God for who he is and what he does. So, I'm going to ask you, care and prayer. How can we help one another through prayer today? It's a simple phrase. Maybe when we're praying to God, maybe we say, we can't, but you can. I can't, but you can. See, this type of prayer, it shows and expresses that we cannot live the Christian life on our own and acknowledges that Christ can live his life through us. See, is there a I can't area you would like prayer for? I'm telling you, earlier this week, I reached out for prayer. I have family that is dealing with uh, COVID. 
Some of you all do out there too. Because I can't and you can. I have people calling me each day. And don't get me wrong, call me. Email me, message me. And it, it's heartbreaking. And I'm not a, not a real, Adriana will tell you, I'm not a real emotional person. Um, <clears throat> not that I have emotions, it's just that I don't express it very well. But, um, and it's heartbreaking to hear stories that are happening, whether you believe it or not. Because what's 0% in your life is 100% to someone else. It took me time in ministry to learn that. That while it may not be affecting me, that it's affecting my brother and sister in Christ. And because of that, when the Bible tells me to love on them, I love on them. And it makes me realize that this prayer that I can't but you can, there's nothing I can do about that but I know who can. I know whose spirit can come and be with you at this time. Because this prayer expresses that we cannot live the Christian life on our own and it acknowledges that Christ can live his life through us. So right now, if you have a prayer request and, and you don't mind putting it on the comment section, Put it in the comment section. Don't be embarrassed. Because anybody who would look on that with judgment does not have Christ in them. Or if you just want to message it to me or you want to call and just say, I can't, but I know who can't, let's pray. Let's pray. I think right now in the world, a lot of people And I'm not saying the vaccines, I'm not saying any of that. I, I'm saying that a lot of people have not, they've looked for themselves for intelligence, they've looked to their brain, instead of looking to their heart and saying, you know what, let's come to this in prayer. Next Monday I'm going to be putting out a, um, it's a seven day prayer for what's going on in our world. I'll say take it or leave it. But it puts emphasize, it emphasizes prayer specific for those days because we as a denomination have, have devoted ourselves to prayer on this instance because we can't but he can see maybe that prayer today is a prayer of salvation that you need in your life and all you got to do is admit believe and confess see maybe you just need to admit what you have done wrong and ask for forgiveness. See, because in Romans 3.23 it says, all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. In Romans 6.23, the wages of sin is death. In 1 John 1.9 it says, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just and will forgive us of our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. Admit. Next is believe. Believe that Jesus died on the cross and rose again as payment for your sin. The simple fact that is, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. See, even in 1 Corinthians 15, 3 through 4, it says Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, and that he was buried and he rose again on the third day according to the scriptures. <clears throat> in Romans 5, 8, but God demonstrates his own love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. While we were enemies of Christ, Christ still came because he loves us so much. Believe in that. The next is confess or choose. Confess and choose to allow God to be in charge of your life. Matthew 16, 24 says, Then Jesus said unto his disciples, If any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. In Romans 10, 9, it says, If you declare with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and believe within your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Romans 10, 13 says, Everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. And maybe you praising God for his infinite power right now as you saying this prayer of salvation. Reaching out to God and saying, Save me. And if that's you this evening, I want you to repeat this prayer after me. Lord Jesus, 
far too long I've kept you out of my life. I know that I am a sinner and that I could not save myself. No longer will I close the door when I hear you knocking. By faith, I gratefully receive your glorious gift of salvation. I am ready to trust you as my Lord and Savior. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for coming to earth. I believe you are the Son of God who died on the cross for my sins and rose from the dead on the third day. Thank you for bearing my sins and giving me the gift of eternal life. I believe your words are true. Come into my heart, Lord Jesus, and be my Savior. Amen. <clears throat> you know, if you prayed that prayer tonight with us, please let us know. I want you to call us at 210-674-5180. or email us at Pastor Sam at ValleyHighFPC.org. Pastor Sam at ValleyHighFPC.org. You know, today we we're trying to answer the question, how can I live the life God wants me to live? I'm going to repeat this. We have to have an awareness of God's great power. We have to have true inner power. And we have to praise God for his infinite power. Let me pray for you all today. Blessed Heavenly Father, thank you for this time. Thank you that you've given us an opportunity to come into your presence to read biblical truth. Father, you are great, you are mighty, you are strong. How we have so many ways to describe you, Father, but all I can say is that you are our Savior. Your Son, Jesus Christ, loved us you loved us so much that you would come down to save us. Father, we thank you for that immeasurable love, that unfailing love, that forgiving love. Be with those who are sick, Father. Be with those who are on the front lines, Father. Be with those who are making decisions. Be with the leaders of our, our country, our state, our local government. Father, give them the strength Give them the truth to make good decisions. Father, be with our church. Be with our church members, the body of Christ. Be with from the eldest to the youngest, Father. Those who are sick, those who are, are getting better, Father, we reach out to them, Father. They, they may know that they are part of a body and they are loved. We do this in Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. <clears throat> hey, well, we just want to say thank you for being with us here today. Don't forget this Sunday... We will continue to have services online for the next two weeks. We've been closely monitoring uh, the, the progress of what's going on in COVID, and we feel that it's safer for our congregation, our community, that we would be ho holding online services. And we're going to be talking about anointed one, son of God, son of man. And that comes out of Luke 4, uh, I think it's 18. I've read it so much, I already forgot. Uh, <clears throat> but anointed one, son of God, son of man. We're going to proclaim who God is, who he was, and who he will ever be this week. Invite your friends to that. Share on Facebook. Go ahead and like, subscribe, do whatever you got. Maybe YouTube or, uh, let's see, like Facebook. And look for us on Twitter, Instagram. We're going to start posting there. But also, if if you want to help support and provide for the ministry, we thank you so much, church members, for being um, committed to to uh, your, your, your tithes during this time. And if you're uh, a person that's outside our, our church, but you still want to give to the, to the ministry and, and, and to the vision of Valley High First Baptist Church, we want to encourage you to go to, to get.tithe.ly. That's G-E-T dot T-I-T-H-E dot L-Y. And when you go there, you're going to want to search Valley High FBC. <clears throat> so if, you, if you're on YouTube, search Valley High FBC. Facebook, Valley High FBC. Uh, go into the Tithely app, uh, Valley High FBC. You can do it on your computer, your tablet, your smartphone, wherever you have a device. Folks, share this with those who you think need to hear the gospel. There's a lot of people right now that need uh, to hear a word of encouragement. Uh, I pray that this is encouraging to you because we have a mighty God. Um, it makes me think of, what a mighty God we serve, what a mighty God we serve. Angels bow before him, heaven and saints adore him. What a mighty God we serve, right? I, I think of those songs and things like that. And, and there's a reason we sing those songs is because it's true. 
Now, I want to say Sunday, don't forget, anointed one. Uh, next Wednesday, we have some stuff. I wanted to have some really cool stuff for you to show you this week, but uh, man, chicken sandwich took me down. Um, but um, <clears throat> we'll definitely have it next week for you. But I want to uh, know you are prayed for. I, we, the church, reach out to us. If you have any needs, special needs, please reach out to us. We're here to serve you. And we want to say uh, God bless you and goodbye.